Welcome back to the show. Let's go to line number five. Hello, Marjorie. You're on the air. Hi, Patty, my darling. How you doing? I'm best going today. How about you? Oh, hanging in there. I'm not, I still have a top shelf with you. Oh, you're not? Oh, yeah. It's all good. Oh, you still are okay. Good. You know what, Marjorie? Yeah. We had a great conversation the other day. It stirred up all kinds of reaction on my Twitter, all kinds of emails, and those are important conversations to have, so I appreciate it. What's on your mind today? No, no. I want to talk about Eddie Joyce today. <laughs> okay. I've got to give that a brain for him to get one, because all the work is about his brain is not caught up with his body yet. He's asking questions. Tom has Marcellus answering all his questions, <laughs> and then Tom never loses his cool. The gentleman's the gentleman, and that still keeps going like the Twitter. Uh, he's worse than Twitter. Oh, I, I, I was uh, too bad I didn't bump you. We well, wasn't a liberal to be found yesterday. He couldn't see one in there. What's Eddie asking questions about? About the, the hospital out in uh, out in uh, Corner Brook. And Thomas said, "Well, this is all started. This all planned. This money allocated. Or we're they're waiting to get in the planning stage. The people who are going to do the hospital. Yep. And we're waiting for them to come to us. And he's making out like Tom Mars is uh, holding back on and doing things out there. I mean, you know." Since he started being the finance minister, we're getting more things than we ever thought we'd get in our life. There would, I mean, you never knew of getting a filling or, or getting your teeth out or nothing ever cost you nothing. Your tablet tires you cost you anything when you're a senior. They're doing more for daycares and everything. I mean, you look at the, you must have seen the book, did you? The, the blue book. I got it here, yeah. Yes. I mean, sure, look at that. I mean, I'm not very bright and I didn't even read that. But the thing is, though, and for Mr. Marshall, or Minister Marshall, he'd say the same thing, getting the questions only gives them an opportunity to answer them, which is what, you know, if you're in government to a cabinet minister, I have, if I was a minister, I would want the tough questions yeah, because I then I could answer. Problem. I have no problem answering questions. They're told in their voice. They're looking at them, like, looking at Tom Marshall like he's foolish. Yeah. You know, it's the tone in their voice. And, and if I was, I, I'd eliminate the third party. I mean, they wouldn't even be allowed to be there. I wouldn't even recognize them because, they're, they're, you know, they're really, really out to lunch. But I tell you, this one fellow over there, uh, that young fellow from Port of Est. And, you know, he's not a bad young fellow. He, at least he comes out with a good tone in his voice. Was that Mitchell Moore? No, 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 don't mention him. They're over in the Liberals, you know. Oh, a liberal. Uh, That's from Port of Est. Well, who's the, who's that? Really? Was there before Parsons? Yeah, Andrew Parsons. Yes. Yeah. Now he he got, when he asked the question, you know, he keeps it with a good tone, his voice, and he's really genuine and answer questions. He's not out to send shit and dirt out. I'd say that Andrew Parsons is going to be a force in that party because he's had a really good start to his career as a politician, and I do uh, I do like uh, Andrew, and I, I do like the way he presents I himself. I don't mind. But listen, I'm not cackling about people asking questions. Sure. They're tone, their voice, and shitting around playing politics, yeah. and they're posing for the sake of posing. You know, as one. One person down the city hall, Shandy Duff said that, you know, the only thing that makes her think is when someone opposes things for the sake of opposing them. Yeah. You know? Because uh, old politics, I mean, if, if you never need this, the, 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 the fifties and the rottenest dirty day to get in. And when you get to gentlemen like Tom Marshall, I mean, the down to earth, gentlemen, honest and generous in every way, you know, you, 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 you take a look at it again, because he wouldn't hurt a fly. By the way, I know I had something to tell you. Uh. I seen my boyfriend yesterday. Everybody else got to the budget delivered, and I got daddy yesterday. Where to? Oh, he was in there. Oh, God, Patty, I knew I had something to tell you. <laughs> I was so, I thought I was going to die. I thought I died and went to heaven. I couldn't hear, I couldn't see. I have a bad hip and hardly walked through. I didn't even know I was walking. I thought, well, God, I tell you, I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars. And I thought he looked fit to eat enough on television. When you see him in person, oh, my dear God. Oh, my God, my God, I tell you. And I, uh, he, he's the joy, I, I, I you know, I, all my life I know, but when he became premier, he even got nicer I'm, and better, you know. And the higher up he went, the nicer he got. And I thought if I died and went to heaven yesterday, I would have flew right there. It would have made it all oh, worthwhile. Yes. Marjorie, what is, I think it's interesting, though, that you say the third party, which, of course, is the, the NDP, uh, that you would have no patience for them. Because our last conversation, which a lot of people latched on to, some people say Marjorie called and finally gave Patty the gears, was about a lot of things that the NDP tried to stand no, for, no, the no, social no, democracy no. and the and the rights of those who are less fortunate. Yeah, no, but they're, doing, they're, they're, they're only doing, they don't really mean to do, they ever had to do it, all they do is talk. <laughs> they're only, but George Murphy's not, I can't, I can't, I, I've known John or George for a long while, uh, and I had nothing against it, but like I told, I told right to his face yesterday, if he keeps posting the things I believe in, well then I'll keep nailing them and I'll forget to mention them. 
No, I don't know. I have to, so I have to say that I do like George Murphy. I just don't agree with the way they act. No, no, their brain will never catch up with their bodies. And then, and I mean the tone in, in Lorraine Michael's voice and the, the, the smirk on her face that, you know, like we're out to get some. You don't need to be out to get the gold, but you ask questions. I tell you, they, and I'll take lessons off Andrew Parsons now. So I'll tell him one cent to go to. So if you want to know how to ask a question and get things answered and treat people right, to get an answer and get no, just be like Andrew Parsons. I think it'll be remarkable what uh, difference we might see if all of the elected men and women took a step back and dropped their saucy tone and stopped with the heckling foolishness. I wonder would it make a difference in the way questions are asked and then consequently the offer, the answers that are given. Because currently all it is is saucy questions with saucier answers. So right. I don't know and, where we're going. And I mean, they're driving the crew. Uh, you know, she can take off herself, Kathy Dunderday, but I mean, they're even driving her off her head. Yeah. I wouldn't answer them at all. See, so that would be no good for politics. And so I'd tell them where to go, go back where they came from, in her cave or on her cabbage bed somewhere. <laughs> but anyways, I thought, now I, I wasn't going to get on, but I can't let Eddie Joyce away with that. Because the true, I won't I might get on, and I said, I have to get to, uh, at him. Because I'll be, I, I'm going in there for a couple of trips down that the house is open. There up. you go. And I tell you, but listen, they got the best fella. And he's even, we wouldn't be able to fight out of while without Tom Marshall, because I tell you, he's you know he's so caring and considerate, and, I, and I'm glad you got that book. Now you read that, so you'll know when they're ringing in the politics and the crap and around. You'll be able to say no, that's it, you know. Oh, I call so, I call him out when I see fit. Oh, anyway. yes, thank you very much. And this, I, uh, uh. I t by the way, I told her, but I still love you just as much as I ever loved you. Never went away at all. I just uh, I just had to answer you about that thing. No, not that I wanted to answer, but you did. You, you know, I wanted to say you came out and said uh, what you. Saying, that you didn't mean it that way. No, I never changed my mind about you, my son. Well, that's fine. And listen, as you know, I, I can accept any criticism or conversation anyway. I think it's great. I, I was really glad you called. All right. But anyway, but I'm going to continue to call you. I don't want you to go away. Well, my son, I tell you, I said, I, I like to argue sometimes, but I, when I, something bothers me, I waited two or three times you mentioned that. No. And see, when I like to, I can't fight with you. So I had to be the bus driver got to fight with you the other day. Well, I'm glad you did. And as usual, I always enjoy the conversation. Call anything. All right, thanks, okay. Eddie. Bye, Marjorie. Bye-bye.